today's video, we're going to talk about an amazing molecular biology concept called RNA interference or RNAi, where this I stands for interference. Now, what is this RNA interference and where is it used? To understand what is RNA interference, let's first look at the mechanism of gene expression. So, in the gene expression mechanism, we start with DNA, which is transcribed. The genes in the DNA are transcribed to give mRNA. And the mRNA is translated to give proteins. And the proteins carry out all the cellular functions needed for life. So, where does this RNA interference come in this gene expression? Well, this is a mechanism of regulating this gene expression. So, by regulating, we mean that the protein production is going to somehow be stopped. No proteins will be produced by this mechanism of RNA interference because it is interfering in this process, specifically where the mRNA is being translated into proteins, right? It is interfering in this process. Now, what carries out RNA interference? RNA interference is carried out by double-stranded RNA. Yeah, you heard me right. Not double-stranded DNA, but it is double-stranded RNA. Double-stranded RNA generally doesn't occur in cells naturally. It occurs as genetic material for some viruses. It is not normally found in cells, but it can be produced inside our cells under special circumstances. We'll talk about that later when we talk more about RNA interference. So what are the types of double-stranded RNA that can trigger this RNA interference mechanism? There are two types of double-stranded RNA that can trigger RNAi. They are small interfering RNA or siRNA and micro RNA or miRNA. Keep care while writing siRNA because si should be in small letters and RNA should be in capital letters. Similarly, while writing micro RNA, mi should be in small letters and RNA should be in capital letters. Also, don't get confused between micro RNA and mRNA. MIRNA stands for microRNA and mRNA is the gene transcript that we get after transcription. So, how are these DSRNAs involved in regulating the gene expression? First, we'll start with small interfering RNA. One thing to know about small interfering RNA is that they are usually found when there is a viral infection. When a double-stranded RNA virus infects a host, then the host's RNA interference mechanism is kicked off. That is what produces this small interfering RNA. This has a lot of potential uses. I mean, the siRNAs can be cloned and artificially expressed. It has a lot of potential uses. We'll talk more about that in further videos. So, because they don't naturally occur in our cells, siRNAs are exogenous. In contrast, miRNA or microRNA may be produced within our cells under special circumstances which makes them endogenous. So, first we'll talk about the siRNA and how it is formed. So, here we have a host cell which is now being invaded by a double-stranded RNA virus. Now, this virus is going to inject its genome into the host cell, which is this double-stranded viral RNA. And this is going to hijack the host cell's machinery to produce viral proteins, which is exactly what we want to avoid because those viral proteins would then be involved in producing more viruses and in causing infection. So, how does siRNA prevent that from happening? So, we're going to focus only on the double-stranded RNA that is now inside the cell from the virus. Because it's not usually found in the cell, this unusual RNA is recognized by a protein known as dicer. Keep care when you're writing this name dicer, this D should always be capital. So, this dicer protein is going to come and recognize this double-stranded RNA. Now, what this dicer like the name suggests, is going to do is it's going to chop this double-stranded RNA into smaller pieces. That's very important for the formation of siRNA because the siRNA is nothing but these small chopped bits of double-stranded RNA. So, once dicer comes in contact with this double-stranded RNA, it's going to chop this long strand of RNA into smaller bits which are known as small interfering RNAs. Now, you have to remember that the RNA is going to have opposite polarity like DNA, right? Because it is double stranded. One is going to run from 5 prime to 3 prime. The other is going to run from 3 prime to 5 prime. Now, when dicer is chopping this up, it's going to add certain tags here. 
certain molecular tags that can be recognized by a complex of proteins not just one protein it's a complex of many protein subunits that's going to come and bind to this double stranded si rna now one such protein that is part of this complex is known as argonaut and when this complex of proteins binds to this si rna it forms something known as rna induced silencing complex or risk and it is this risk that's going to trigger the interference mechanism it is going to make sure that translation of mrna does not occur now which mrna are we specifically talking about we're going to talk about the viral mrna that's going to produce viral proteins right so once this risk is formed one strand of this double stranded si rna this is going to get degraded this is known as the sense strand only the other strand which is known as the anti sense strand will remain now why is this important you see this anti sense strand has sequences complementary to this viral mrna let's say the sequence here is a u because this is rna dot dna g c so there is going to be a bit of rna here that's going to have a complementary sequence to this sequence this is going to be u a c g now what is going to happen is that this risk complex this is going to come and bind to this specific part of this viral mrna and that is going to activate this argonaut protein which is also known as slicer and like the name suggests this slicer is going to slice this viral mrna into little pieces like it's going to chop the mrna into little bits now with the mrna now chopped into pieces translation cannot occur the viral proteins cannot be produced by means of translation this is the entire goal of this rna interference mechanism so the small interfering rna is going to become part of this rna induced silencing complex risk the sense strand is going to be degraded the anti sense strand containing risk now is going to come and bind to one part of viral mrna and then slicer which is argonaut is going to chop this viral mrna into pieces making sure that translation does not occur now one thing you have to remember is this si rna is highly specific to specific mrnas these si rnas have target sequences that will bind to only specific mrnas and not in any other mrna that is in the cell now that we've learnt about si rna let's move on to mi rna and how it performs rna interference so i told you earlier that mi rna is endogenous right which means that it is produced within our cells as well now where it is produced is first it is produced in the nucleus from dna specific parts of dna that don't code for any protein so this is non coding rna so from dna a non coding single stranded rna is produced by transcription now certain proteins within the nucleus like drosha this is going to convert the single stranded rna into a double stranded rna by folding it upon itself so this rna strand is going to fold upon itself forming a hairpin loop like structure that then makes it a double stranded rna these base pairs are actually now complementary if this is a this is u if this is g this is c like that then this double stranded rna now this is the micro rna this is going to be moved to the cytoplasm in the cytoplasm it will encounter dicer this dicer what it's going to do is it's going to chop this hairpin loop here it's going to chop this part of this mi rna so we're going to be left with just a double stranded rna sequence that has one sense strand and another anti sense strand and now the process is similar to the si rna process and the risk complex containing that argonaut protein is going to come and bind to this double stranded mi rna after which the sense strand is going to be degraded and now this complex risk complex this can target mrnas in two methods one way is like how the si rna worked it can go and chop the mrna by binding to this target mrna specific sequences like say this is gcc this is going to contain cgg this is going to come and bind to this and slicer again which is argonaut this is going to chop the mrna into bits and pieces so no translation will occur another method by which mi rna can prevent the expression of this target mrna is by targeting its 3 prime utr or the 3 prime untranslated region 
Now, this 3 prime UTR is a region located near the 3 prime end of the mRNA that acts as a translation termination sequence. So, it tells the translation process that you've reached the end of the mRNA. There is no more mRNA to be translated. So, what this miRNA does is that it goes and binds to this 3 prime UTR region of the target mRNA. By doing so, it's going to prevent the translation of the protein. Now, this is very useful because this way, miRNA becomes highly non-specific towards the target mRNA. It can target a wide range of mRNAs by binding to the 3 prime UTR region. This is highly useful because now the miRNAs can be used to prevent the translation of mRNAs that can lead to proteins that cause cancer. So, these mRNAs have been formed from mutated oncogenes or DNA repair genes and now if proteins are produced from this mRNA, it's not going to be able to regulate the cell cycle and cell division or contact inhibition. So, those proteins that can lead to cancer can be prevented from being produced when the miRNA binds to the 3' prime UTR region of those target mRNAs. Now, this is highly useful in the field of genetic engineering as well because the miRNAs and the siRNAs can be used in the field of agriculture to produce pest resistant plants. We'll take a look at how this RNA interference mechanism is used to produce pest resistant plants in another video.